Oh, big thank you to CHS and a, a big thank you to all uh, you guys out here who had a great year last year. Allow me to get to come to an event like this. I tell you what, there's, there's not much better than this. I know we, Cheryl was going to do what she could to help the weather last night. We had a bit of that wind. But I tell you what, I'll take 60 degrees and breezy over negative 10 and looking down the barrel of a major winter snowstorm blowing through Iowa this week. This is wonderful down here, and I'm really excited to be here. So big thank you. Today we're going to talk about what's ahead for agriculture, what's driving agriculture in the year ahead, what are some of the big trends, the big issues that are going to be confronting those of us working in the ag industry in this next year. Uh, and, and I think there's a lot going on, there's a lot of positives I think to look forward to, and I think there are also some things that we're going to have to keep our eye on. There are some issues that uh, they're going to begin to affect us more and more, and we need to be ready for those as they come. Before we can begin to look to the future, though, it's important that we understand where we're coming from. And I think those of us in agriculture, especially those of you guys in the Corn Belt in the eastern, western Corn Belt, down in the south, 2012 is going to be remembered as a year of drought. It's what it's going down in the history books as one of the worst droughts in 56 years. And that drought created a lot of risk, created a lot of uncertainty for your producer customers. It created a lot of sleepless nights, even though we've got pretty good use of uh, crop insurance. When we're looking at weather events like that, it still has an impact and people feel it. And they felt it all year last year. And I think for a lot of your customers and probably for a lot of you guys, 2000 and 12, the drought of 2012 is really going to have an impact. So that was the main issue in 2012 was that drought. Now that drought itself did a couple of things for us. Caused that weather market we saw last year in the commodities. We saw $8 corn, you know, we saw beans getting up near record territory. We saw that translate to a decent amount of money in a lot of your customers' pockets, which, if you're here in this room, I'm guessing a little bit of that made it back into uh, your company's profits, which is great to see. But it did a couple of other things. It created some water restrictions out in Nebraska and Kansas. Are we going to see those again this year? It's a possibility. It's something that we're going to have to, to be prepared for. The other issue we had in 2012 was the farm bill being extended rather than a new bill being written which means we get to worry about the farm bill all throughout 2013 again. I, I host a show called Market to Market on public television, and for those of us in media, an event like this is something to, to kind of appreciate because it gives us a reason to go on the air. We'll have farm bill updates for you every weekend now until we get one passed, which might not be until September, November, December of next year if we get one passed then. So that's going to be an issue. Those are the, the two main issues confronting us in the immediate future in agriculture. What's going to happen with the weather and what's going to happen with the farm bill. Now on the plus side, things to be thankful for, in 2012, we had record low interest rates across the country. That's great. That's great. Guys are able to pay down a lot of debt. We've seen farmers deleveraging. They're able to borrow money to take advantage of that other issue, those record high farmland values. Without the low interest rates we've seen, we would not see farmland values where they are today, which is a blessing and a curse. My wife and I recently uh, bought a farm ourselves. We are cattle producers. We are the largest feedlot on our street. We are feeding 14 head of cattle. So we are up and comers. But I tell you what, for young producers like us, seven acres, that was all we could afford in this in, 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 with land prices where they are. For folks that have been in agriculture a long time, folks that have a lot of farm ground, these record high farmland prices are really making their balance sheets look nice. Banks are very excited to see these farmland values and to see the strength that we're seeing in the ag economy. So those are the two immediate positives we've got come, coming up behind us, kind of the wind blowing at our back in 2013. Those low rates, which are going to stick around, it looks like, for another couple of years, and these farmland values which aren't going to go anywhere as long as farmers are still making money 
and commodity prices are staying high. So both of those things are going to be favors for us in 2013. But like I said, for a lot of those guys in the field last year, 2012 was a long year. A lot of us felt like we were working nine days a week last year just because of the stress and the additional risk. So I think the ability to have, hopefully, a more normal weather season in 2013 is going to make everybody feel a little bit more comfortable. It's going to be a little bit happier out in the ag community, even if we do see commodity prices take a bit of a, uh, a, bit of a dip, which we might. Like I say, issues facing ag in 2013, we've got the continuing drought. It's going to be an issue. We've got commodity prices that are tremendously volatile. The way that we trade commodities, the way that we trade equities, the way that we trade anything is so different now than it was 10, 20 years ago. We've got high frequency traders. We're trading in algorithms. We've got increased fund participation in the ag markets. That's something we haven't seen before. Since when have the ag markets been an attractive place for fund money? Well, since they've gotten volatile. And they're going to stay volatile. We've got so many events on the horizon that are going to affect commodity prices in 2013. We are going to see prices all over the board. We saw it last summer. We're going to see it again this summer. So be ready. Tell your customers to be ready. Last year, we had the drought creating a lot of uncertainty. This year, it's going to be prices. It's going to be up one, down the next, because we just don't know where everything stands. We're coming from record low ending stocks into a potentially record South American crop in soybeans. Where is everything going to shake out? If I had the answer, I tell you what, I'd be living down here full time. I've got some ideas, and I get the chance to work with people who deal with the commodity markets all day, every day. They live and breathe this stuff. So I want to share, you their, share with you their ideas. Uh, but the, the bottom line is, it's going to be uncertain this year in prices. The other positive we've got going for us in 2013 and on into the future is the growing US economy. We'll talk about it in a little bit. The US economy, we've heard it for the past three years. <coughs> recovery summer. We first had the recovery summer back in 2009. That was the big government's push. We're recovering. We're getting better. Hey, hey we're turning around. And then, and then we kind of didn't. Then in 2010, hey, it's recovery summer. We're turning around this time for real. It's going to be great. The economy is going to pick up steam. And then we kind of didn't. I do think enough of the metrics now are pointing to a growth in the US economy. We've been treading water at the bottom for five years now. And we're starting to see things pick up. Consumers are feeling more confident. First time home buyers are beginning to take advantage of these low interest rates. We should see the rest of the US economy, the part that is in agriculture. We've had a great five years. But the rest of the US economy should begin to turn around. We'll begin to see that in 13 and on through 14. Very positive on the US economy. The other thing that I think bodes very, very well for US agriculture is international growth. There's a number that's being thrown around. And, and any time you come to an event with other ag producers or folks in the ag community, you're going to hear this number. We're going worldwide from a population of 7 billion to 9 billion by 2050. We're adding 2 billion new people to the population. That breaks down every single day when folks around the world sit down for dinner, farmers have an additional 220,000 mouths to feed. That's a lot of demand. The other positive, as we're growing the world population, the world population is growing in wealth relative, of course, to where they've come from. And as they feel wealthier, they want to buy the food that we take for granted in America. They want to buy protein. They want to buy steaks and pork chops and everything else that we've always just kind of taken for granted. And that increased consumption and the increased consumption of higher quality foods is really going to do great things for those of us in agriculture. We're coming off a record three years 
of high farm incomes, and I think we're going to continue to see high farm incomes basically on the strength of that international growth. So that's where we're going. That's what's ahead of us in 2013 and on in to 2014. Taking a look at the drought, the weather situation, this is the drought monitor from February 12th. There's still a lot of red on that map. How many folks here are from Nebraska, Kansas, South Dakota, Oklahoma, Texas? It's not news. You guys know how bad it looks out in your neck of the woods. We're not getting moisture. We're not getting the winter moisture that we thought we would. And things are pointing towards a drier spring, at least as of right now. We've seen the drought recede a little bit. The best news is we've seen the drought almost completely eliminated in the eastern Corn Belt. We know southern Indiana, southern Illinois, they were hit hard with this drought last year. We saw yields fall like crazy in a lot of places uh, in that area. And now they are pretty well caught up on moisture. So things are turning, turning slowly. But uh, for those in the, the western Corn Belt, the drought is going to be a major issue. According to the National Oceanographic and Atmospheric, Admi Atmospheric Administration, we're in a wavering El Nino. There isn't an El Nino and there isn't a La Nina. And these guys publish their, their results or their, their updates every couple of days. They look at the satellites and the, the weather systems and they go through history and they see where things are. And then they update it and each, each day it, it changes pretty substantially. Uh, we've got a guy in Iowa who studies long-term trends. His name is Elwin Taylor. Iowa State University Extension climatologist. Elwin is a great guy. He's a great speaker, and he knows weather backwards and forwards like the back of his hand. He's got charts stretching back to the 1850s. I had the opportunity last year uh, to go listen to Elwin at the Iowa Ag Bankers Association. This was last March before the drought came into effect in 2012. Elwin had an hour. He stood up in front of the group. And he's talking, he's talking, he's talking, and then he kind of gets to the end, and it's his summary. And you know, we're all there going, you know, what's the weather going to be this year? And Elwin stands up there, and Elwin says, if we develop an El Nino off the coast of South America, then we'll have adequate moisture throughout the Corn Belt in 2012. If, on the other hand, we don't develop in El Nino, if a La Nina situation develops off the coast of South America, then we might be looking at a drought in 2012 and we won't have adequate moisture. If, however, things stay the way that they've been, it's very difficult to predict what the weather's going to do throughout the summer of 2012 in the Corn Belt. And then Owen sat down. And we were all sitting in the audience. And very entertained for that hour. But when we left there, we had absolutely no idea what was going to happen in the weather. We were either going to have a lot of rain, or not enough rain, or perhaps it might be somewhere in the middle, which was kind of my guess going into that room in the beginning. That's just sort of my assumption on weather. It's one of those three things is going to happen. And when we're looking at these long-term forecasts, that's important to keep in mind. Uh, they say that we've got the technology now to accurately predict weather three to four days out in advance. Anything beyond that, and we're, we're basically educated guesses. That's why we see so much use of his, historiographical, uh, his, historical trends, so we can kind of get an idea of, oh, we're kind of like it was back in 56, it, this last summer, kind of like it was back in 88. And none of those comparisons fit very well. So as we look to the future, these are all the best guesses put forth by the best meteorological minds as of today. By tomorrow, they could be completely different. So as of today, they are calling for a warmer, drier winter, which we have seen in most parts of the country. Um, they are calling for a drier than average spring in the US heartland, which is not what we want to hear. We need to get some subsoil moisture developed. So I'm hopeful that this is one of those areas a week from now, they'll change, and we'll begin to see adequate rain. Uh, they, they do say that the, the more intense El Nino, the situation that's going to get us back to historical weather patterns, probably not going to happen until late, late summer 
into the fall of 2013. Uh, so just in time for harvest, we might be getting adequate moisture. So that's something to look forward to uh, for your producer customers out there. Keep them out in the field. The drought had a lot of impacts. Had a lot of impacts on your customers. We saw it in higher prices. And then we saw that those impacts carry on to the consumer. Uh, we saw food prices go up a little bit in 2012. They were up about 1.8%, not, nothing substantial. Um, but that's supposed to accelerate this year. You know, the, the impact of the drought is going to carry forward into 2013 on food prices, whether or not we get decent moisture. We are predicted to see strong inflation for meat and dairy. We're going to see cattle prices go up, probably test records. And 2013, they're predicting, this is the USDA is predicting, that we will exceed historical levels for food inflation in 2013. And that does a couple of things for those of us in agriculture. The one most important that it does, food prices, whether we like it or not, whether it's fair or not, food prices are how urban consumers, that's the window through which urban consumers view those of us in agriculture. That's their connection with farming, is what they pay at the grocery store. And so we have the potential for seeing higher food prices this year and p potentially water restrictions if we get that drought carries forward and we're in a farm bill year. Folks, this is going to be a year where it's more important than ever to stay involved politically. Who here loves to watch C-SPAN? No hands? Oh, me either. I'd rather have my teeth drilled without Novocaine than watch C-SPAN or, or follow politics in general. But for those of us in agriculture, myself included, we're going to have to change that. There's 1% of us involved in production agriculture, 2% of us in the country involved in the ag industry. We are dwindling. Our impact politically is dwindling. When there's fewer and fewer of us, we have to do whatever we can to make sure our voices get heard. And I think we have a lot of great folks in Congress who are doing everything they can to represent rural America. But they are facing an uphill battle, just numerically. There's just not enough of us anymore involved in agriculture. The rest of the country is one, two, three generations removed from the farm. They just don't know what we're doing out in corn country, out in the field. So we have to be sure we can make our case heard. That's going to be more important than ever in 2013 as we fight for this farm bill.